All right, folks. Nice April morning. Let's see, here's my trusty 281 Betsy, as I call her. 35 years old. Um, we're having a little bit of tuning issues with her this spring, so uh, I've tweaked the high jet a little bit, running her more fat today. See if that uh, uh, helps hogging through some of this big wood we're working on. So let's take a look at what today's project is. Okay, I'm back on my family property in East Central Minnesota. Oak dominated hardwoods on sandy soils. A lot of these old growth oaks are beginning to tip over. Succumbing to two line chestnut borer. And we've even got a little bit of oak wilt here and there. Uh, you can see we've been opening up uh, some areas, taking out some diseased and damaged trees. Uh, and uh, right here we've got a rather sizable 30 inch pin oak that's been dead for about four or five years. And another one that's been dead for probably the better part of eight or ten. These trees are up about 50, 60 feet. This one's a little bit smaller, probably about a 24 to 26 inch diameter. So we're going to have to clean up, create our escape routes and safety zones around these trees, do a little bit of cleanup work here. Um, these trees are leaning a little bit out onto the driveway here, but not much. Not sure whether we're gonna bore these trees or do a conventional back cut. And, and dealing with dead snags requires a little more attention. Uh, generally speaking, on this sand plain, these trees are very sound for maybe even a couple decades. But we always have to worry about bark and branches up on top coming down from us. Now, what we are going to try and do is we may fell them across the road, uh, but I am worried about these younger pin oaks and damaging them, especially since it's springtime. Uh, so we may. Uh, try and sacrifice a few smaller shrubs and trees along the left side of the driveway here and uh, fell these trees a few degrees off of their lean to see if we can uh, minimize the amount of debris on the road um, and then we'll buck them up from there. Another vantage from the north on these two trees we're going to take down. Here's my mark. Uh, looks like our best gap uh, is going to be to slightly bridge the road when we lay these trees. And this first tree that we'll drop, we're gonna try and uh, see if we can save this little black cherry. But you can see she's got a fair lean, so we will be dropping this probably 15, 20 degrees off of the lean. When we get into it, we may have to change this plan. Ideally, with a snag, you wanna drop it with the lean. But if we do that on this particular tree, we're going to end up dropping her into and damaging these small pin oaks. And a fair chance that we could end up hitting the fence over there on the other side of the driveway. On this second oak that we'll drop, here's our mark here. The idea is going to be, again, to try and drop this, slightly bridging the road. I'm going to try and bring it just on the left side, which would be the east side of that 20, 25 foot eastern red cedar and see if we can save that tree and also utilize the lean a little bit on that other oak. So that'll be the plan. So with the lean on this tree, it would appear as though we could send it just slightly to the right or south of its lean over towards that gap right up in there 
there's a slight gap most of this tree will fall shy of that gap that's a black cherry there and then these are all pin oaks and uh, we will do some damage but very minimal when the tops the big bones of this tree slam over there but uh, filling the tree utilizing the lean mower and we do have a westerly wind behind us um, that's the safest option all right so here we are on that northernmost dead snag blazed all the bark it's definitely rot about an inch and a half to two inches inside the bark we will prep some more of that before we finish cutting so that if we do have to drive wedges there's no soft edge to have to deal with you can see there's where we're going to try and lay the tree it'll come out just short of the fence most of the tree will not hit this black cherry or small pin oak but it may scuff a few of those branches so here we're sitting underneath the lean we're going to be falling at probably three to five degrees off a of lean so not too far off a of lean and by the time we finish prepping this trunk probably going to be small enough where i can use a 28 inch bar to just bore cut this i feel a little more comfortable with it since it is leaning and it does have cracks in the middle uh, there is a slight risk of some barber chair so instead of doing a conventional back shut cut and uh, chasing the hinge and chasing the tree as it falls we're going to use a bore cut
Notice that really thin hinge falling with the lean, rigid wood. Didn't need anything overly back, overly big in that back strap. And you see there was, as I said earlier, no root rot in the center of the tree, given that this tree's probably been dead 10 years. Yeah. It uh, had no issues with the rotten stump. And you can see she fell just a little bit left of our intended lay. And uh, that's mainly because of the big bones that were out there pushing it towards the left. But only about five feet off. I'll take it. Old Betsy did her job. <laughs> 